Hello and today I'm excited to announce that I am entering the 50s and early 60s for the next few weeks to celebrate the fantastic series that has been The Marvellous Mrs Maisel. So if you don't have Amazon Prime and don't watch The Marvellous Mrs Maisel, it is a brilliant show but part of the appeal is the fabulous late 50s and this season early 60s outfits that Midge Maisel and her mother Rose wear in the show. So I have quite a collection of 50s and early 60s dress patterns which I thought I'd show you today and I will be sewing with them over the next few weeks. Let me know if there's any pattern in particular <laughs> that you would love to see made up and as you probably noticed I'm wearing for the occasion a 50s uh, early 60s outfit. I'll show you. So the dress is early 60s. It's silk with a cow neckline and a slightly foolish skirt but not as full as it would have been in the 50s which is why it's a kind of 60s number and I'm wearing I'm just going to bend my head so you can see the full effects I love these millinery velvets a little 50s hat and of course we see a lot of those in the show the 50s half hats and these little hats worn tilted to the side of the head uh, mine is kept on with a hat pin from my <laughs> extensive hat pin collection if you're wondering how it's staying perched on my head so let's kick off with the patterns so excuse some of these looking a little tatty they are original vintage patterns that I have from the <laughs> 1950s and early 60s doing my maths so they're at least 60 years old, aren't they? So, <laughs> a bit tatty. So let's start off with this one. And as you can see, this one has, which is one of the trends of the 1950s, the button down front. And of course the scoop neckline. And there's the one with a little pretty kind of turn up sleeves. But I especially love the little neckline with the addition of some kind of net that then does suck around the neck. And the gathered skirts with the camber band, you know, the sort of deep waist, which was very characteristic of the 50s. And then we have this one with the very full gathered skirt. And, you know, this is like a good style if you don't have curves because I think one of the things with the 1950s is people feel like they look at the stars of the era especially people like Marilyn Monroe and Elizabeth Taylor and think oh I am one uh, <laughs> he does not have an hourglass figure but if a gathered skirt is great because it gives you you know it makes your waist look smaller and your hips look bigger which for uh, straighter figures is actually really flattering this has this very gathered skirt which is definitely a trend of the 50s so this is a pattern for a dress jacket and slip and you can see the little jacket it stops at the waistline and this is a trend of the 50s that jacket lengths became shorter than in the 40s and and stopped at the waistline for obvious reasons if you're going to wear a kind of very full skirt you want a little crop fitted jacket and this pattern is for the jacket a slip and the dress and another feature of this pattern is that wide scoop neckline i'm going to do an episode on how to create that shape what well, basically what kind of foundation garments undergarments to use to create that 1950s shape because as we all go through these patterns you'll see that a lot of these dresses have these very wide scoop necklines and it makes me think of quite a few of the comments around the walkaway dress was oh, oh it's a bad pattern because it bags it around the top now I think that could be unfair because as we go through these 50s patterns you will see that a lot of them and into the early 60s have these big scoop necklines it was a feature and what they did was to have a little kind of loops at the side so you could kind of 
put your bra strap through the loop and then do it up with a popper something that we will look at in future episodes so I don't think that it's necessarily to our modern eye we put it on we think it bags but <laughs> one it perhaps doesn't bag if you are <laughs> standing up straight with your shoulders back of course it does bag if you slouch but i'm thinking and this is only my own thoughts but i'm thinking they were probably more into into posture and how you stood then you know there were those lessons of walking around with books on your head so you will notice there are a lot of scoop necklines and I don't think we should be seeing that as a problem with the pattern. So, on to the next pattern, which has a different kind of very full skirt, created with these inverted box pleats that kind of flare out, and these different neckline options. And I especially like the one with the square neckline and open collar is especially maisel-ish. And perhaps also the one with the little bow at the front too. I can see her or Rose wearing that. And then this is another of my original patterns which I love and I found at a vintage fair the other day. And it's for a little bolero and these were really popular in the 50s and you can imagine why to wear with those flared dresses that a little bolero to keep you warm and not to, you obviously don't want a longer jacket hitting a the gathering on the hips, you, you want that very defined waist in the 50s. So sweet little bolero and I love all three versions. And then thinking of that very scoot neckline, there's this pattern which is in the late 50s, early 60s and you can see how wide and scoop that neckline is and if you think of like pictures of Brigitte Bardot at the time she did wear those very wide scoop necklines and it's for a little sheath dress and of course the designs of the 50s they were the two extremes both very feminine but you either wore your big full skirt or you had a sexier uh, on some anyway <laughs> I uh, wouldn't like to say, um, anyway, yes. Um, yeah, so sexier and therefore considered unsuitable for teenagers, apparently, were these kind of she's or like kind of wiggle dresses at their tightest or pencil skirts. So this has the option of your little fitted dress, but with an overskirt. And these little overskirts, I've got one, an original one, in this fabulous novelty print. I might do a little episode on my original 50s and early 60s dresses because the novelty prints in this era were just fabulous. And there were some lovely novelty prints in the 40s, but in the 50s they really went to town with novelty prints and there's some fabulous ones and the kind of overskirts you could have your plain dress and then you could have a, an overskirt with something either a kind of fancier fabric as they've shown here like in a lace fabric or, or in the overskirt I've got a kind of wonderful novelty print and of course just to say on that front I do have this uh, repro pattern for you know the poodle skirts the circle skirts <laughs> with a motif when always poodles you never all can have anything you want really and that's really fun too and then in 1957 influenced by sportswear one of the most popular designs was the shirt waist dress which is just so wearable today and this is the little original pattern I have and you can see it's just it's really pretty really wearable and obviously any fabric you want and one of the features of the 50s and early 60s and I think one of the reasons that Mrs Maisel's clothes have appealed so much to us is the use of colour. A uh, world away from the <laughs> monochrome colours of today, they use really fun, beautiful colours and glorious prints. For clothes, it's a really fun time. I guess 
It was like after the war, America was really flourishing. The fashion industry in America really took off in the 50s. And so we're talking like really, really colourful, fabulous colour combinations, which completely <laughs> comes across in Mrs. Maisel and also fun prints too. So shirt waist down, that's a 50s design. And then going into the early 60s, the shirt waister, there's this pattern. You can see the difference is that hemline started to come up a little in the early 60s and skirt slimmed down a little bit. And and I love this little shirt waister too, because it's like, if you look at the collar, it's actually got a really pretty little collar option. And then into the early 60s, of course, can't talk about this period without thinking of Grace Kelly for the more princess line dresses with the flared skirts and for the slightly more gamin tomboyish look Audrey Hepburn and this pattern to me <laughs> just screams Audrey Hepburn and it's a lovely early 60s pattern and of course the other outfit and I don't yet have a pattern for these but I might make them uh, which we see Midge Maisel in and was a really Audrey Hepburn look is of course the Capri pants those little kind of tailored pants with flat shoes and that's like a really fun wearable look too and then of course you had to wear underneath your dress at this point a slip so it's a little original pattern I have for a tailored 1950s slip and we also see Midge Maisel wearing some rather wonderful nightgowns, usually in sugar almond shades. And just to show you a few of the nightgown original patterns I have, this one, which is very Midge Maisel with that kind of pretty little lace top and then fleety skirt. And this one, which really appeals with the kind of gathered front, looks very pretty and wearable. And then this rather glamorous 60s gown too. And I love, this is a 60s pattern. It's not really very much maze, but I just thought I'd put it in. So this lovely little kind of red riding hood effect. I do kind of want to make that at some point. And then into the 60s, this caftan kind of Mary Quantish house coat. So those are my original patterns, like being around for, what did I say? Sort of 60, 70 years. Now I'm on to patterns I have that are true vintage patterns, but reproduced now. So not modern interpretations of but uh, companies that have reproduced original vintage patterns. This one, which I found was interesting for its high neckline, very elegant high neckline, and sort of flatter fronts with the gathering at the back, I thought that looked rather interesting and rather pretty. And also has a feature that you see a lot in 50s designs, which is the use of braid, especially, and I love it, rickrack braid. Rickrack braid came into its own in the 1950s, and I have lots of vintage rickrack braids, so <laughs> at some point I'm going to have to find uh, <laughs> a way to use it. And as I was saying with Mitch Maisel, a lot of fun colour contrasting. And I think this pattern would be ideal. And I also love the, the stripey example, the playfulness with using these stripes in different directions. We've also got this kind of grown on dolman sleeve, which was a, another 1950s feature. And this pattern from the 1950s, which is so pretty with that sort of scoop neckline with the extra gathered bit. And this is one with the gathered skirt and waistlines in this era sat at the natural waistline or just above and so we've got this the gathered waistline into the fitted waist and of course to the use of contrast braid or piping so another pretty one and I just wanted to show you this pattern it's 1949 so it's a bit early for Midge Maisel but isn't it fun? It's the pockets, I think, the pockets that are so fun. And you can see that 1950s silhouette, which 
did come into being at this time with Dior's new look. It was introduced in the late 40s and you can definitely see the influence on this pattern. And then this pattern shows another 50s trend which was to still shape the design into the waistline, kind of mould it into the waistline but with a slightly dropped hip but but still emphasising the waistline with princess seams or in this case darts just fitting the dress around the waistline and again with the big skirt. It's important to not be put off 1950s look because you haven't got an hourglass figure because the whole thing with the 50s is it created the illusion of an hourglass figure and a little sort of turned shawl collar really really characteristic of the 50s and this design which I love and I think it's like completely characteristically playful in the Midge Maisel style it's got either the colour contrast or the playing with stripes the big skirt it's really feminine and really fun and I think uh, one that really captures the style of the show and I was talking earlier about the fitted slim dress or the kind of <laughs> the kind of big skirt and this pattern is one that combines the two and of course that gives you the opportunity to use like a fun colour combination as they often do in the show so a sheath dress with your contrast colour overdress with a big skirt and I think that's a really fun look and then one more on the theme of the fitted skirt versus the gathered skirt and those two alternatives is this pattern which is 1961 which I think is the exactly the year that the finale of Mrs Maisel is set and it's great for showing just all the characteristics the wide waistband in the natural waist area the scooped neck and also the contrast between either your like little fitted skirt or your full gathered skirt and then the last thing I wanted to mention was of course hats love 50s hats I love them and I especially love the 50s half hats uh, like the ones in this pattern here so perhaps I'll be <laughs> attempting to <laughs> create one of those two and then I had to include this completely mad hat pattern this is my finale this completely mad hat pattern from the early 60s <laughs> what do you think <laughs> I love how it goes from the evening kind of, you know, net look to, oh, <laughs> the version that you can wear in the bathtub. <laughs> so on that note, I hope you enjoyed looking through my patterns with me and that you will join me for my very own Marvellous Mrs. Maisel season of sewing and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye!